These two scooters are both 125 cc, but that one is 500 euros cheaper than that one. But why? All right, so I got a message, a comment on one of my videos, on the JetX video to be precise, from uh, Keith Ord. And Keith writes, apparently though, the Jet 14 is rated at 10.8 horsepower, whereas the newer JetX is rated at 13 brake horsepower. Surely there would be a noticeable difference in power. Well, Keith, you are only half right. And that's because uh, on my video review of the Jet 14 and uh, on the review of the Jet X, I tested the Jet 14 liquid cooled, the 125 liquid cooled, which has the same engine as the Jet X. But you are correct in noticing that Sim also makes a Jet 14 125 air cooled. I realized that there are many, many more differences between these two scooters. And that's why you have a price difference of about 500 euros between them. Not just two brake horsepower, there are a lot more differences. And I thought it would be wise to make a video pointing out all the differences between them. So in this video, we're gonna go, we have the air cooled, we have the liquid cooled, and we're gonna go through them. And I'm gonna show you every single bit that's different between the air cooled and the liquid cooled. So let's get into it. All right, if we look at them at the front, we see absolutely no tangible difference. They have the same LED lights with the same daytime running lights. Once again, this one is the liquid cooled. This one is the air cooled. They have the same windscreen, the same mirrors, the same handlebars, the same even tires. But if we look at the brake disc of the liquid cooled variant, we can clearly make out an ABS, an ABS ring down there. If we come to the air cooled, we have no ABS ring, so ABS ring, no ABS ring. That is because the air-cooled variant comes with a CBS system. That's a combined braking system, whilst the liquid-cooled version comes with standard ABS. Now, what does combined braking system mean? Well, let's look on the dash, actually on the handlebar. If we look here, Focus. If we look on the left lever, which is the rear brake, we see that we have this cable coming out and it's running to the front brake lever or to the front master cylinder. That is because when Let's see if we can get it in there. When you pull the rear brake, there is a cable that also pulls on the brake cylinder of the front brake. So basically, when you pull the rear brake, it acts a little bit on the front brake as well. You can see it working right there. See how I pulled the rear brake? And the reason this, this rear brake is able to work on a cable is because the air-cooled version in terms of rear brakes has a drum brake whilst the liquid-cooled version has a disc brake also another difference this is the dash of the air-cooled variant we just have a fuel gauge a speedometer and that's about it whilst this is the dash on the liquid cooled version. Also, another way you can tell these two apart, if you look on the right side at the engine, the air cooled version basically has just a fan, while the liquid cooled version, of course, has a radiator. Once again, coming around to the back, we have the same size 14 inch tires, both on the air cooled and on the liquid cooled, but on the liquid cooled version, we have dual shocks, while on the air cooled version, we have just a mono shock, and it's on the other side. 
This is reminiscent of the 50cc version of the jet. In terms of storage, the air cooled and the liquid cooled have the same size storage. Also, they have the same cubby holes in the dash and the same luggage hook for both of them. Now, Keith was right in pointing. There is also a brake horsepower difference between the air-cooled and the liquid-cooled. That's about two brake horsepower. If you wanna see how the engine runs on the air-cooled version, it's basically the same engine that's on the Symphony SR, which I did do a review of. And you can check it up up here. There should be a link popping up. So let's recap. We have the same light, same general shape. We have the same colors available, the same storage space. On the liquid-cooled version, we have ABS. On the air-cooled version, we have CBS. The liquid-cooled version gets a rear brake disc. The air-cooled gets a drum brake. The air-cooled has a more cheaper analog dash. The liquid-cooled has a digital dash. We have twin shocks on the liquid-cooled. We have a single shock on the air-cooled. And that's about all the difference there is between them. So if you can miss out on about two horsepower on ABS brakes and on dual shocks on the rear, that's basically kind of the same scooter. I'm really happy to see that the air-cooled version did get the LED headlights, which are really important if you ride at night. But if you want the full jet experience, I would recommend getting the liquid-cooled version because that engine is a four-valve engine, it's much crisper, much nicer, much revier. It's a, it's a much more pleasant engine than the air-cooled. The air-cooled is great, it, don't get me wrong, it's good. It does its job well. But the liquid-cooled is just that little bit better. But if you can't swing the extra 500 euros, then the air-cooled version is a perfectly good scooter for you. Until next time, guys, take care out there and ride safe. Bye. <laughs>